Good morning Year 11. This morning I'm going to be talking to you about how to achieve success in English and specifically how to revise for the upcoming English exams. There are six months to go before we anticipate your exams will begin and of course you have your mock exams in January as well. The first thing I want to remind you of is just how important attendance is in these next few weeks and months. Last week's attendance for Year 11 was just under 92%, so slightly disappointing. Now at 95%, we anticipate that students will meet or exceed their target grades. Anything less than 90%, and we know that statistically, students do not meet their target grades. Your attendance will impact your exam performance. Now every week, your English teachers and teachers in other subjects as well are putting resources and lessons and work on Show My Homework. So if you are not in school, it is absolutely vital that you are on Show My Homework, you are accessing those resources, you are keeping up with the work. And that's your responsibility to do that. But even better, get yourselves in school because actually your attendance is vital to your exam performance. The expected exam dates for English. Now these are expected, these could change, um, but also this is a reminder of just how many exams there are in English. So, expected exam dates. Uh, firstly, your first exam this year we expect will be English Language Paper 1 on Wednesday the 26th of May. Then you'll have English Language Paper 2 on Thursday the 10th of June. We expect English Literature Paper 1 to be on Monday the 7th of June. And your final English exam will be English Literature Paper 2 on Monday the 21st of June. So four exams and they're the dates that we expect that your exams will be. Lots to revise for. <laughs> Understanding where we are now. We are in a good place Year 11. We have finished teaching the content. You know exactly what exams you're going to be sitting and we're, we're nearly all, by Christmas, we'll be at the point where we will have finished preparing you for each of those exams. That's brilliant because it means that from January, we will be revising. What a great place to be in. So far this school year, so since September, you've already sat two assessments. You sat an assessment for language paper one, and an assessment for uh, Macbeth as well, so part of your literature exams. And as your English teachers, we were so encouraged to see uh, just how committed and dedicated you were to preparing for these exams. We were encouraged to see the effort that you put into these exams, and we were really, really impressed by just how well you did. And actually, the only way from there is up. So we're expecting some really, really outstanding results from you uh, come summer. As I said to you, we are working towards your mock exams and in January, you'll be sitting language paper one, where we expect to see an improvement from the assessment you sat in October, and also language paper two. This will be the first time that you've had an attempt at language paper two. This is the paper that we're currently teaching in lesson at the moment. Now, after your mock exams, we will be revising because we will have finished teaching you the content for English literature and English language. Each year, the revision schedule that we uh, follow in lessons is bespoke. It's tailored to the needs of the year 11 cohort that we are teaching presently. Um, whenever you sit assessments, whenever you sit exams, we always say to you that part of the reason for that assessment, part of the reason for that mark is to see what do you know and what do we need to help you with? What do we need to ensure that you are successful going forward? What do we need to do to help you improve? And that's what we'll be doing after these mock exams in January. We'll be using them to see what you know so that we can tailor our teaching and our lessons to suit you and your needs. The only way is up. <laughs> so our commitment to you, quality teaching first and foremost, every lesson will count, we'll make the most of um, all time in all lessons and although we have a mixed ability approach in English, every, to every set, every class will be treated as if it is a top set class. We will be teaching you how to get those top grades because why would you aim for anything other than top? So yes, quality teaching and that consistent approach. As I said to you, we'll be revising in lessons because the content has been taught. 
Uh, we will offer revision sessions, so breakfast club on a Thursday, after school revision club on a Thursday, and the lunchtime revision as well that Mr Leonard uh, hosts on a Friday. Uh, we were so, so encouraged to see uh, over 84 students, that's nearly half the year group, attending the revision sessions this half term. So fantastic effort from you. Um, and we have promised Mr Jenkinson we'll get over 100 next half term. So don't let me down, kids. <laughs> Um, practice exam questions, which we'll be doing in class, but also we'll be giving to you for homework as well. Um, in your anthologies and your booklets, you've got knowledge organisers. You can use these for revision, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that in just a moment. Um, we'll be making sure that your tutor time um, is useful. We'll be using um, creating and distributing revision resources to be used in tutor time. Um, you have got, as you know, the best English teachers in front of you. And what's brilliant about your English teachers is that a lot of us are also exam markers as well. And we share that exam marking knowledge and expertise uh, with each other to ensure that we are preparing you for the exams. Uh, just last week, we had a um, language paper one uh, session run by Mr McEvitt, who was talking to us as an examiner about what to uh, expect, what to teach to prepare students for the language paper one exam. Um, and this Thursday coming, we have another session uh, run by Mr Wills, uh, who is a language paper two examiner and expert and again he'll be sharing his expertise so that your teachers have got the very best knowledge to impart uh, on, upon you and, and to you. Um, teachers are always around after school for feedback if you've, if you've done any practice questions that you would like feedback on or if you'd like to discuss any concerns or if there's something that's really puzzling you in English um, and you just want a little bit of extra help on it your English teachers are always around after school to help you um, or you can find me just in the library there as well. And we will help you um, by providing quality reading for context and model answers, model essays as well. And again, you can find some of these in your anthologies that you've got, particularly in your Macbeth anthology that you're currently using in your English lessons. So we are really committed to you and to ensuring your success. But you want to know how to revise for English. So here goes. First of all, you should reread the texts. You know that you will have an exam on Lord of the Flies. Reread it. You know you'll have an exam on Macbeth. You know that you'll have an exam on power and conflict poetry. So they're the texts that you need to be reading. The more you know those texts, the more confident you will feel going into that exam. Reread the texts. You should memorise key quotations from the text as well. To help you memorise, you should write out the quote. Check it, cover it, say it, check it, did you get it right? If not, go again. And actually you can test each other on this as well, or you could work with your parents or your guardian angel in school to test you on some key quotations. Have you got them right? You could annotate blank poems, blank texts, and then you could check those against annotations that you've already done in your anthologies to see that you've remembered everything. So practice that annotation. Five minute revision page. Dead simple, piece of paper, blank page, uh, and choose either a topic, a theme, or a person that you're going to revise today. So, for example, Lady Macbeth. Fill the page, everything you know about Lady Macbeth. I'm talking quotes, plot points, themes, vocabulary, everything you know about her, context. Um, and you've got a five minute revision page there. Time yourself, can you get everything you know about Lady Macbeth, or whatever it is you're revising, on that page in five minutes? And then that's a nice little poster that you can put up um, where you're going to see it, in your bedroom or, you know, next to your mirror, wherever you're going to see that, that five minute revision page. Practice questions um, available on Show My Homework, available from your teachers. Be strict with yourself. Do these practice questions in timed conditions. Give the practice question to your teacher to mark. We want to mark your work. We want to give you feedback. Um, when I say time yourself, I'm talking if you're doing a language paper one, question two, language question, give yourself 10 minutes and no more. There's no point you spending an hour over that little tiny extract that's only worth eight marks. So time yourself. Uh, think about the literature papers as well. You'd have about 45 minutes for a literature question. So again, it's not about perfecting an answer. It's about practicing it in those timed conditions um, because practice makes perfect. 
uh, read, read, read. The more you read, the uh, the better you'll do in life, but also in exams. Uh, reading really helps to grow your vocabulary. It really helps to uh, form wider ideas and more perceptive ideas because you can then bring background knowledge. You can then bring prior knowledge to the exam to get into those perceptive ideas. Also, reading will help you spot patterns in writers' work. It will help you spot patterns in fiction and in non-fiction as well. So again, it's about helping you uh, to understand a text quicker, but also helping you to get to perceptive ideas quicker as well. So read as much as you can. Fiction and non-fiction too. Revision guides, all available on Parent Pay. I know that some of you have bought these already, um, but yes, uh, revision guides are really, really useful. If you've bought a revision guide and you're not sure how to use it, bring it into school, ask your teacher or ask your guardian angel or bring it to me and we'd love to sit through with the, uh, sit with you and just go through the revision guide and just point out some of the best uses for it. OK, uh, revision cards. Oh, my goodness fantastic revision resource they are versatile which means they can be used for a variety of different reasons and what's great about revision cards is that you create them and they are for you so created by you for you so you can use them for exactly what you need them for some uh, ideal uses for revision cards could be uh, writing a quote on it um, so that you can then test your uh, memory on the revision card you could write a character's name on one side and all the uh, vocabulary um, on the back. So that again, you can test yourself on those. You can use revision cards to uh, test yourselves for um, language features, vocabulary, theme, character, context. Uh, absolutely fantastic, fantastic revision resource. Uh, so yes, um, and lastly, breakfast club and after school revision, lunch club revision as well, um, all there for you. Um, to help you revise your English, okay? Uh, ultimately, team, it is down to you. So revision, uh, we'll, we'll put on as much revision sessions or as many revision sessions, sorry, as we can. We will uh, revise in lessons with you. Um, I've told you our commitment to you, but it is down to you ultimately. So you've got to reread the texts, memorize those key quotations, practice questions, really important, timed conditions, bring them in for feedback, um, revision guides, revision cards, show my homework, particularly if you are off school, um, and get yourselves in school as much as you can, as often as you can, every day, because your attendance will impact your exam performance. So make sure it's a positive impact. If you've got any questions, you can see your English teacher, you can come and see me down in the library, or you can speak to your guardian angel as well. Uh, reach out if you're struggling. You've got head of year. You've got Miss Ingworth, who's our head of upper school. So reach out if you are struggling, if things are getting a bit difficult for you. We understand. We're here to help you. Uh, get yourselves in a good routine. Uh, 10 o'clock bedtime uh, so that you're refreshed, you're alert, you're ready in your lessons. Um, make revision part of your daily routine. I've talked to you about attendance. Every day counts. Uh, Try and limit your access to screens, particularly your phone. So after a certain time, don't have your phone around so that you're able to get a good night's sleep. Uh, but also, uh, if you are revising, if you're doing homework, don't have your phone near you, where it'll be easy to pick up, get scrolling and get procrastinating. Um, and something I really like to do is to make a little to-do list. You can see it just on the screen there. Make a little to-do list, things I'm going to do that day so I can tick it off. Helps me to feel successful, keeps me motivated. Um, so yeah, I really recommend doing that. Make that part of your daily routine. Okay, bit of reflection from you. Think about results day. Think about results day, August 2021. Now we know that every student needs English for their next steps. It's a really, really vital subject, vital grade for everybody. So yes, we do want you to think about what grade you need. But I also want you to think about what grade would you be proud of? When you open that envelope on results day in August 2021, what would make you proud? And what do you need to do to achieve success in English? OK, Year 11, have a fantastic week and uh, speak to you soon. Take care now. Bye bye.